Okay, so we are live with VindyCast number 24. What's up, everybody? Uh, this will be my last cast before I go to MLG. Uh, just a reminder for you guys, uh, because I know that I have not been doing these uh, solo casts as often lately, I have a, a gig... Uh, casting for the Indie StarCraft Team League that is hosted by Impulse Esports. I have been having a lot of fun with that. Uh, they've been uh, putting on a really good production of the the, Indie, the ISTL tournament. I've gotten to see all sorts of crazy games from uh, all of the different matchups, and I've gotten to see a lot of like really good players too. Uh, so that's been a lot of fun for me. So if you guys get the opportunity, please check that out. So for today, I do something a little bit different planned. Um, I have a couple of replays by somebody that I greatly admire. Uh, he posted a help thread on the Terran discussion board. Uh, I hang out there a lot just because Terrans seem to be the most friendliest players, uh, at least on the Battle.net general, at least on the Battle.net forums. Um, he is asking me, uh, uh, he's asking for some help about his mechanics because he recently switched from uh, from Zerg to Terran. He played uh, Terran in Season 1, and then he's played uh, Zerg from Seasons 2 to 7. And the reason why he's switching to Terran, he says, is because he does not like the Zerg versus Zerg matchup, and I totally understand with him, and I sympathize with him, because as a random player, Zerg versus Zerg is by far my least favorite matchup. So, uh, two things about about this guy. First of all, um, he, he's this is actually Iron Man SC. And for those of you, all of you act guys actually know who this guy is, even if you might not think you know him. Uh, he is the map creator who designed the Ohana map that is currently being used in virtually every single major tournament right now. He, he's, he's created all sorts of other different maps, but that's the one that he's most known for, uh, just because it's being used in such major tournaments. And I've been following this guy's work a lot. He he does a lot of really good job with like community feedback. He, he's a really, really good map designer. So I figured I would do what I can to uh, to give him a little bit of help with his, Terran, um, with his Terran play, but also just to give him a little bit more exposure in the community, because guys like him really should be, uh, should be well known in the community. Map makers especially, they are such an, a huge huge important part of what makes StarCraft 2 successful and they don't get they don't have the celebrity status that I really do think that they sometimes deserve and Iron Man has produced nothing but consi has consistently produced nothing but really solid maps so I am a really big fan of this guy so I'm hope so I want to uh, hope I'm hoping that my uh, my feedback today will be helpful so first, let's get started on a couple of his replays. I'm going to skip through these a little bit because I don't want to like go because I'm going to try and get through two replays in the same cast so I don't want to like have to uh I don't want to have to like watch like every single thing from the uh, from like normal speed or whatever. So uh, I'm going to be skipping through these replays a little bit, uh, just so I can get like a general feel for like what he's doing, and then I'll focus in on some of the on some of the things that I think he might need some work on. Okay, so here we go in our first replay. This is going to be on Shakuras Plateau, which you guys have heard me say before is a very special map for this matchup. Now, Iron Man, if I had not mentioned, is actually in high gold league. Uh, so, uh, mo most of what I was talking about before with this high ground, low ground play on this map, about how the fourth is so out of position from the main base and how easy it is to utilize mobility and drops on this map, uh, that doesn't really come into play as much in gold league because most gold level Terrans do not have the multitasking to take advantage of the fact uh, to take advantage of multi prong drops while still being able to macro cleanly. Now that's something that virtually every single masters level Terran player can do, but masters level Terran is obviously a very far cry from gold level Terran. So um, what we should be seeing from Iron Man, usually on this map. I actually uh, am a big fan of uh, mech play on this map, simply because uh, it's very difficult for Zerg to actually sw surround it and swarm it the way that they can on other maps, and that's one of the big weaknesses of mech, is like it's, it's, a, it's vulnerabilities to uh, well-timed flanks and so on. But also this map can play out uh, very well, just in very... Uh just in very standard ways with uh, siege tank timing pushes, bio timing pushes. Bio timing pushes in general are actually really good on this map. So I'm I'm wondering how Iron Man's actually going to be playing this out. It does look like he's going to open up with a uh, a gas. I think he took that gas at 15 or so. And the gas timing is actually pretty solid. And it does look like he's going to be going for a one Rax expand build. Okay, so uh, I, I do actually... Um, 
support this build. I'm not, I'm not actually a huge fan of it in my own personal play. I actually still like to open up with something that gives me some semblance of map control when I play Terran. I still like to open with early Hellions. I think that it keeps the Zerg honest and, and forces them to at least build a single spine crawler. Something like that. Something that will at least prevent them from just droning uh, in incredibly early. And also what it also does is that it forces them to get that early speed. Now the one thing is that uh, Zergs, at least in the lower leagues, or at least not in the leagues where I am, which is like Diamond and Platinum level, I play, I play a lot of Diamond level players even though I'm in Plat League. Uh, they, a lot of the times, they try to be hyper greedy after the, especially following this, uh, this queen change, and they will just completely neglect Zergling speed if you let them. And they will go straight into things like Roach Infester, or straight into like, you know, just a ton of drones very early on. So I like going for Hellions, just because it keeps the Zerg honest. But, it does look like in this case, he's going to be opening up with a two racks. He has his command center up here, but he's actually being very safe with it. He's actually just waiting before he can actually secure this location before he moves it down. But this command center has acquired 85 energy before it actually lands. So he, he could have already used one of the mules that are in there, but he isn't. Uh, it does look like Iron Man is going to be going for some form of marine tank push, which is actually pretty common. It's actually a pretty common follow -up. This does look like it's going to be a two-base timing push. But the one thing that Iron Man is not doing right now is that he is not really scouting very much. He does know he did get a scan on the Zerg player's base, which I guess is pretty good because that does that does show him that the Zerg already has a layer down. But what he doesn't really have much of, a, much of an idea on is what kind of tech he is going for now. Uh, just based off of my knowledge of the matchup, this double evolution chamber down here and the fact that all the gases aren't already taken yet, that usually tells me that they're going to be going for some kind of Infestor Zergling play, which does not surprise me because on this map, a Zerg really loves Infestor play. I can't really understand why I love this map for Mutalist play. Uh, I understand that as the later as the game goes on, uh, Mutalists are not very good for holding off Terran pushes in the middle. but Mutalists actually are so good at denying that drop play that Terrans love to go for on this map. So that's one of the reasons why I like them. And actually, Iron Man is being doing something very interesting here. He's actually dropping three factories with tech labs. And then continuing to drop barracks on top of this. He has a single engineering bay down and an armory. You know what this looks like? This looks like a very heavy Marine Thor build. This is something I used to do very early on in StarCraft 2, and it might be indicative of the fact that Iron Man played um, Terran in Season 1, because this build actually was like somewhat popular back in Season 1. So I think that's what it might be. It could also be that Iron Man's about to start throwing down a ton of siege tanks, but... Um, it, from the looks of things here, it does look like he's going to be going into a very heavy Marine Thor build. Now, Iron Man's macro is actually pretty good. We're at 10 minutes in this game right now, and he has 43 SCVs. He hasn't really been cutting ex, uh, SCV production at all, but he hasn't really been spending this, this uh, command center energy. Uh, you don't always need to use it for mules, but like he's not, he's at least letting it stockpile up into his command centers. He's not actually utilizing all that much. Like he, now he uses it. But that's like one thing you have to, you always have to keep track of as a Terran player is making sure that you always have um, that energy being used for something. You don't just let it stockpile in your command center for no reason. All right, Iron Man, I you, you've lost me here for a second, dude. You're going up to two additional star ports, so now you have five racks, three factories, and two star ports on two base. And you haven't done any sort of pressure to your Zerg opponent yet. It does look like Iron Man is really just interested in dragging this out into the late game. But unfortunately for him, the Zerg player is already taking his fourth base. It's up to 43 drones. The Zerg is actually not droning all that well, which isn't really surprising considering the Zerg is also in Gold League. And the Zerg is actually going for a Roach Zergling unit composition. And it has not constructed any buildings that are... That are on the same tier as Lair Tech. So both of these players are, um, both of their macro is like, is actually a little confusing for me. Um, I'm not really, now, Iron Man is actually over, is over making production structures at this point. He's producing a ton of production structures, but isn't actually making units out of them. What's actually more cost efficient is to just make a single production structure and never stop making units out of it. That's how you usually play Terran. This many production structures you really only need on a minimum of three bases. You need a minimum of three bases to support this many production structures. 
you can't produce you can't support this off two base but it does look like Iron Man is making this additional command center and that he is going to be going for this command center down here at the at the uh, the usually the third base location that Terrans like to take. Terrans like to expand towards their opponent, especially in Zerg versus Terran, whereas Zerg likes to expand away from their opponent because their armies are usually more mobile. Okay, so from the Zerg's perspective, we have upgrades coming up on these roaches, and he's going for a big roach play with upgrades. This is not normally something I usually see in this matchup. We have Iron Man taking this location over here, but unfortunately for him, these overlords are already getting a perfectly good scout of that, and he's actually burying SCVs over there also. So Iron Man is actually playing this out somewhat like a Zerg player, as a matter of fact. Like, he's trying to play Terran the way that Zerg likes to play in that they power up their economy, power up their production, and then start building a ton of units at once. Unfortunately, the way that the Terran economy normally operates, this isn't necessarily the biggest this isn't necessarily the best way to play it. Why? Because Terran armies are not nearly as mobile as Zerg armies are. And they're and it, despite the fact that Iron Man has a ton of production facilities, Terran production is not actually that fast. Especially when going for units out of a factory and or starport. But he is now making a ton of additional Thors, and his third base location is under attack, but he is going for a drop at the fourth base, so we will see a, uh, an expansion trade, really, for the most part. Iron Man is going to lose this expansion, but he also managed to deny the Zerg fourth base. Meanwhile, the Zerg is going up to Hive Tech, and actually this is going to be a big loss for Iron Man. Despite the fact that he has these siege tanks here, there are just too many roaches here, so he's going to lose all of those siege tanks, because there were no buffer units for them. He does, oh, he does pick up two sea tanks, which is a pretty good idea, and he does move them over to that cliff, and now he is actually moving out with a marine and Thor force. Alright. Okay, so this Zerg has been pushed back to a three-base economy. Iron Man has this drop over here, which he's not actually utilizing, but since there's no, actually no queens or air units in the way, that's actually an okay thing to do, because he's leaving this drop here for a rainy day. If the Zerg ever moves out of position, he'll be able to drop on this third base and actually get a ton of drone kills. The Zerg is still actually not droning all that well. We are now at 20 minutes into this game, and the Zerg is still up to 46 drones, and Iron Man is at 41, is at 46 as 41 SCVs, excuse me, but he's not actually saturating this third base location. Okay, the Zerg cannot attack into this position, especially... Yeah, there's just way too many Thors here for him to actually go into there. Alright, Iron Man at this point actually is in a really good spot. Uh, he can actually just continue building Thors at this point and actually push into his opponent. His upgrades on those Thors are actually pretty good. He's up to 1-1 one, one on those Thors, as well as 2-1 on his Marines. This is, this is a very heavy supply Terran army, and actually Iron Man has a brilliant spot right now. He is up to 188 supply, his opponent is at 145, and his opponent doesn't really have the tech to deal with that Thor count. He has a bunch of roaches out here, but that's only roaches, and against Thors, Marines, Medivacs, and Siege Tanks, roaches won't do it by themselves. They need support units. They need Infestors, they need potentially Hydralis. Hydralis are actually kind of good against Thors or they need air units in the form of brood lords usually to deal with a thor count that high so we don't have any sort of tech coming down from the zerg player at that point he does look like he is just trying to kill that thor army with just straight roaches but he doesn't really have the production to do that off of three bases and 33 drones it does look like iron man managed to get like a, a bunch of more drone kills over here so iron man is actually playing this out pretty well uh, his mechanics are a little his mechanics are a little questionable right now, but it's actually okay because he is actually making the proper decisions at this point. So decision making wise, Iron Man, at least in this replay, you're pretty solid. You are, you do have a pretty good idea of what your Zerg opponent is up to. You are going for drop play on this map, which is actually a really good thing to do. You're actually conserving that drop too. You're not just like over committing to a, a drop that actually is like you know not going to work. You're scanning over here. You see where your opponent, well, you see where your opponent's actually massing up. So. Decision making wise, everything here is pretty solid. This opening, I feel, was uh, very unorthodox to say the least for this matchup. But actually, as far as the late game goes, you are playing this out pretty brilliantly, as a matter of fact. So this engagement is coming over here. Those doors are being very cost effective against those roaches. Combo Gross are now going down on those marines. And the Zerg player now has 105 supply to the 184 of Iron Man. Iron Man can definitely go up here and take care of this third base location. Meanwhile, the Zerg is trying to defend his base, but the one thing Iron Man is not doing is actually moving up his siege tank line. 
Now, if he had moved up his siege tank line and kind of parked it here, that third base location would be completely vulnerable, and the Iron Man would not have lost all of those troops. So he does have a large siege tank position over here in the middle, and now because he has that third base location destroyed, his economy is so much better, but he actually just could have eliminated his opponent right there with that move. Okay, so now we have a relatively naked siege tank line. There aren't really any filler units in this army to buffer for those siege tanks. So these marines are the answer for that. They are making their way up the field with a lot of siege tanks for Iron Man. Zurich is actually doing something really smart here. He is dropping infested Terrans all over those siege tanks and but he does realize that it's pretty much hopeless from this point. He can't leave his base and his drone count has been pretty much reduced to nothing. So Iron Man. Uh, this is actually a pretty this is actually a pretty solid game. Uh, aside from your opening, you played everything else out very, very well. Your decision making was pretty good. You hampered expansions. You continued to try to get drone kills. And the entire time that you were doing this, you were building up a later tech army that consisted of Thors and siege tanks for the most part. So I actually really like how you played this out from a macro perspective. Uh, your Zerg opponent could have done a lot of things a lot better, but he's not actually the one that I'm highlighting right now. So in this replay, your knowledge of Zerg versus Terran is actually very strong. That doesn't surprise me, considering that the, you've played Zerg for five seasons. So uh, your knowledge of the matchup would actually be pretty good. You would know just how vulnerable Zerg expansions could be at any given time, and you knew what unit composition to go for. Your macro is pretty good. Even though you are floating this much money, your supply is always ahead of your opponents. So macro-wise, decision-making-wise, all of this is very good. Uh, Control-wise, this was pretty pretty solid. I, I didn't really see any deficiencies in any in any area on, in this part of the game. Uh, you did manage to save a majority of those drops. You got the maximum efficiency of those of those units in that drop. And aside from losing all of your Thors because you hadn't moved up your siege tanks, which isn't even really a big deal because you do have the money to support it, uh, this is actually a pretty solid played game. So Iron Man in this in your league. In this matchup, as, as far as this replay goes, you're pretty good, dude. You don't need any help in this area. Uh, so we will see how the second replay goes. And this will be a, this will be on Shakuras, or not on Shakuras Plateau, Antigua Shipyard, and this will be a Terran versus Protoss. Now it's interesting to me that Iron Man submitted, the, posted these two replays on the forums on two of the most favored match, maps for their perspective matchups. What did I just do? What did I touch? Okay. Um, you posted a Terran versus Zerg on Shakuras Plateau, and that map is like, especially in some of the lower leagues, actually it tends to favor Terran quite handedly. And on this matchup, Protoss can't stand Terran on this map because of how good draw play is on this map. So, especially in these positions, Terran is actually pretty good against Protoss on this map. So it's interesting to me that these are the two maps that you actually chose to submit replays on. I would have I would have assumed that you would have given me replays of Terran vs. Zerg on Metalopolis and Terran vs. Protoss on Cloud Kingdom, for example, if you were actually really struggling with either matchup. But uh, the, these were the maps that you chose to submit. So uh, this one is going to be a... Uh, this is actually a really interesting name for this guy. What is this guy? Greased Up Death Guy? Is that what his name is? Greased Up Death Guy. I don't know. Sounds like a deaf guy in like one of the, the uh, one of the old '50s movies with like the greased up pompadour. Anyway, uh, just based off of the way that you're starting this one out right now, I can see that you are going to be going for a a gasless expand, probably with the command center on the low ground. It does seem like Iron Man favors uh, macro styles more often than not, which I'm totally supportive of. If you want to be if uh, a well-played macro Terran is one of the most beautiful things to see in StarCraft 2. And as far as his Protoss opponent, uh, Iron Man is actually checking to see if that Nexus is going to go down. But his Protoss opponent is getting down that Cyber Core and that Pylon. And it does actually look like he is going to be going for some variation of a one-gate expand. So we will be seeing a... And actually, Iron Man is actually switching it up. Uh, I think that he's assuming that his opponent is going to be going for some sort of early expand, so he's actually dropping an additional barracks as well as a um, as well as a refinery. So this is actually an interesting build that Iron Man is doing here. Uh, he is drop he is going for this early expansion, but he's doing a two racks expand. This is one of the 
again, this is a very, very old build. Very old build. Uh, this, uh, the, the difference between this build and the one that he was doing before is that this build is actually somewhat obsolete. You don't need to do this anymore. You, you just need to make a single barracks and go for that one expand. You could go for a reactor expand. That's actually a little bit more efficient than what Iron Man is actually currently doing with two barracks down on the field. But he is going for a relatively early a relatively early expansion, at least for Gold Lake. He is going for a gold... Um, he is going for that uh, two racks expand. He's getting a tech lab down on the that barracks, and it does look like he is going to be going for stim out of that, I believe. No, he's actually going for concussive shells. That's an interesting decision. So for our Protoss, he's actually going for what looks to be like some form of three gate pressure or three gate uh, or three gate uh, robo build. All right, so it is going to be a three gate robo build. Uh, is he actually going to be going on offense with this, or is this simply going to be a very, very safe expand build? So Iron Man actually has an economic advantage over his opponent right now. Uh, he, the, the worker count is actually up to 25 to 30, so Iron Man is actually not producing SCVs nearly as well as he was in the previous game. That probably has a lot to do with the fact of uh, how much he, barracks he's actually producing right now. Uh, once again, Iron Man, you are actually producing more uh, production facilities than you realistically need for the number of bases that you are on. Uh, in the last game, you went for five five racks, two starports, and three factories on two base. In this case, you're going for four barracks off of two base at, at almost eight minutes in. You don't need that many barracks. You just need three barracks. One with reactor, two with tech labs. As long as you're constantly queuing units up in there, you're getting the most out of that, out of those uh, production facilities. As the game progresses, you need to add on a factory, a starport, and go up to usually five barracks. And then as the game goes on from there, you continue to add barracks as long as you can spend your money. But in this case, you've got four barracks down here with all of them with tech labs, which I'm assuming is going to lead to some kind of really mass marauder play. But if you're go if that's actually the case, well then this is just an interesting strategy that you're going for. But otherwise, you don't need this many barracks this early. Okay, so this Protoss player is going for probably the oldest trick in the book. He's going for a 3-gate Robo 2-base Colossus build. This is one of the oldest this is one of the oldest uh, builds that Protoss can do against Terran. It does actually work relatively well in the lower leagues because Terran is actually... Uh, a lot of Terran players don't actually like really know how to deal with Colossus all that well. But for Iron Man, he does actually scan the fact that his opponent is doing that. I think he did anyway. Uh, he scanned the fact that he has that robotics facility going down. So actually what he's going for is actually a pretty good response to that. He's actually just going to straight up attack his opponent. Now all his opponent really has right now are stalkers and sentries, but he does have them like arrayed in a very good position. So that it's going to be very difficult for Iron Man to maneuver up that ramp if the force fields from his opponent are actually pretty good. So Iron Man is actually going to back off. He is going for Ghost on top of this. He is adding two, three additional barracks, but he still is not adding a factory. Another engineering bay going down, still no factory. So there is going to be no Vikings actually out on the field in time to deal with this robotic, uh, with this robotic uh, support bay build that he is going for. So if this greased up deaf guy, which I think is his name, I'm still not quite sure exactly what that is. He is, it looks like he might actually be in a pretty solid spot. Iron, all Iron Man really has right now are bio units. He has no medevacs out on the field and the factory is now being constructed at 12 minutes and 15 seconds into the game. A second robotics facility going down here. It looks like our Protoss player really wants to go for a very robotics heavy unit composition. We have another Ghost Academy going down for Iron Man. So actually, if he's, if at some point he manages to get Vikings out with this army, his macro will actually be very good at this point. He is spending most of his army. He's not really floating all that much. So once again, he is demonstrating a very solid understanding of how to macro with Terran other than just overproducing... Um, overproducing uh, uh, production structures, which is actually okay, actually, now that I think about it. I mean, it's better to overproduce production structures in the lower leagues rather than just, like, underproduce them. So this is being turned into a planetary fortress. He is transferring workers over there. His, his uh, SCV count is up to 55, which is pretty good. Pretty good indeed. His Protoss support is actually up to 57 probes on two base, so that's actually about as saturated as you can realistically get on two base. His Protoss opponent cannot take additional bases, and Iron Man is actually doing something very interesting. This is normally what I do against an insane computer. I don't normally do this against players, but he is actually moving out with a very slow bunker push across the middle of the map. 
War barracks are actually going down, so Iron Man is continuing his trend of really making a lot of production structures. He is dropping that armory, which will allow him to get down additional engine, which will allow him to get additional upgrades for his units. And for our Protoss opponent, he is now moving across the map. It, this does look like it is really only to s help him secure his own third base. But if he does decide to go for an attack, this is an interesting unit composition to move out with. He has. One Colossus, five Immortals, seven, seven Zealots, 15 Stalkers, and five Sentries, versus 16 Marauders, 23 Marines, six Ghosts, and a Medivac. So this Ghost count is actually pretty high. This Ghost count will actually do a brilliant job of really eliminating the Immortals in that army more than anything else, because once Immortals lose their Hardened Shields, they only have 200 hit points, and they take full damage from Marauders. So when an Immortal has no shielding, he takes 22 damage from a, mar from a Marauder per shot which is actually quite a lot. So, Iron Man, is, if he actually engages this properly, is actually in a pretty good spot to take down this army. A single Colossus I don't think is enough splash to deal with that. But here comes the engagement, and this actually is not the best in place to engage this army. He needs to come at this army from two sides, preferably with the bio coming up from this side and the ghost from here to get EMPs on the army. So I actually don't like this positioning that Iron Man's actually engaging from, and the force fields are only going to make the situation even but EMPs are landing on the on the entirety of that Protoss army, and the thing is, this is actually still playing out the way that I said it was going to play out before. It, he only has that single gloss in there, and that really isn't enough splash to deal with it, but the Immortals in that army and the positioning is still going to allow him to eliminate all of those Terran units, and now Iron Man is being forced to pull SCVs, but that Colossus data is still getting a lot of kills, and a lot of SCVs are going down, and Iron Man does manage to clean up that attack. There are two additional Colossus down in the field, and there are still only five, uh, five gateways, it's actually not that bad. Uh, so he is going to remake a lot of that army, and for the the one thing that our Protoss player is really missing... Oh, no, he's not missing it, so... I thought he was I thought he was missing charge, but it looks like he's not. He does have all these idle probes, even though he's transferred over to that third base. Meanwhile, for Iron Man, he still has not started any sort of Viking production yet to deal with the Colossus Count in his opponent's army. He does have three bases, but he did lose a lot of SCVs in that attack, so the SCV count is actually relatively even to the pro count at this point, which, of course, as I've said before, favors the Terran player in terms of economy because he does have those mules. Uh, Iron Man is going for some drop play again. There aren't really a lot of units in those drops. So this drop play is going to get repelled, but he does get a full scout of his opponent's base, and he does now know that his opponent has four Colossus out on the field. Four Colossus is actually four times scarier than a uh, than a single Colossus build. That's actually somewhat of a joke. I know how obvious that is. But that's actually six Colossus. So this is actually a huge problem for Iron Man, who only, who does not have any Vikings out on the field. He's trying to produce Vikings out of this just out of the single starport, but that is only a single starport. And actually, the funny thing is, is that even though Iron Man is like, has been so consistent in overmaking production facilities at this point, he does not have a second starport down, so he does not have the ability to produce Vikings in large enough quantities to deal with a Colossus count that large, but it's okay for the moment because his opponent is not actually moving out on the map at all. This is actually still a pretty scary army from Greased Up Death Guy. He has the ability to actually mix in High Templars, uh, Archons into that army, which I think would actually be a superior decision than mixing in Storm, simply because of how much splash he already has. This is actually a bad engagement for Iron Man that is too many Colossus, and he is now in a very narrow choke. But those Vikings are going to manage to get down a single Colossus, but all the bio is just being absolutely incinerated by that Colossus count. It's another Colossus who actually did move into that army. That was actually very poor, and the Vikings are still just continuing to get a lot of kills on all those Colossus, and that was actually just a really poorly played out battle by the Protoss player, who really just allowed these Vikings to just continue hammering away at those Colossus. That is actually a pretty good position for those Vikings, but with the destruction of those Colossus, I think that is actually going to put Iron Man into a spot where he's able to come away with this game. He has a lot of production down in the field, so he will be able to rally more units up the field to actually deal with that army. This is definitely the rest of the game is going to go in Iron Man's favor, and his opponent leaves the game. Okay, um, this is actually a really interesting trend that you're continuing to go with uh, here. He has uh, Iron Man is using has this tendency to really overmake production facilities, which is actually okay because a lot of the time uh, in the lower leagues, especially. 
and even I fall into this trap a lot too. When you're controlling your army, you're not macroing back at home. And what I mean by that is that you're not uh, continuing to hit your hotkey and produce units back home. So the, the fact that he has so many production facilities really makes that a lot more forgiving because then when he decides that it's actually time to go back and start making units, he has so many different production facilities there that he's actually able to spend his money very, very quickly. So as this game goes on, Iron Man did have a lot of production, which is actually really solid. The one thing that he did that I think was really scary is that even though he knew his opponent was going for a very early Colossus build, he did not start making Vikings until uh, after he scouted that his opponent had four Colossus out on the field. Now, had his opponent been going for some really heavy three Colossus push off of two base, Iron Man just would not have been able to hold that, period. He just would not have been able to hold that build at all. Fortunately for him, his opponent moved out with only a single Colossus as well as Immortals, which even though it did damage to his opponent, it was not enough to actually kill him, and his he was not actually reinforcing that attack. So, this game is actually, he pl uh, macro-wise, again, Iron Man's macro is actually pretty solid, but the decision making at least in this game was not quite as crisp as it was in the previous game and that's really just I think a lack of experience with the matchup. So in this game the scouting was pretty good but Vikings counter Colossus dude and the Colossus are really really scary. Believe me they're, they're just really really scary. So if you you need to make sure that when you see that robotics facility down at least when it's that early you need to sw start switching into some Viking production. Get out at least a few of them. I, I don't like how you got caught here making, uh, trying to scramble Vikings out of this starport, and it was only a single starport. Uh, a lot of the time, if Terrans find themselves in that position, it's already too late. Like they're gonna get, they're gonna get rolled over by that attack. Fortunately for you, your opponent held back longer than I think you should have. Didn't mix in Archons with that army and didn't have enough stalkers to actually deal with your Viking count. So this actually went your way. But this was more because of your opponent's decision making than yours. I know it's a little harsh, but that's just the way that it is. So I hope this video was actually pretty helpful. Um, I was just really trying to uh, to showcase uh, those two games and really just point out the things that you were doing. Uh, overall, your Terran play is actually pretty solid, especially for Gold League. So you will actually go pretty far with the matchup. It's kind of I'm kind of disappointed that you didn't decide that you were going to include a Terran versus Terran in that replay pack, but. Simply because I think that's the that's probably the matchup that Zerg players uh, switching to the race would probably have the most trouble actually getting the hang of. Uh, but for those two replays, your macro is like I said before. I just reiterate again. Your macro is really good. Uh, your decision making is actually pretty good, uh, other than a few slip ups a little bit in there, especially in that second game. But other than that, uh, you you look like you're on the right track, dude. Uh, just. Just keep, just keep. Make sure that you continue to scout, and make sure that, especially in situ, especially in Terran versus Protoss, that you counter the tech that your opponent is going for early. Now you went for Ghost Tech first, uh, even though your opponent was going for robotics, uh, a robotic support bay. Now a lot of the time, a lot, a lot, a lot of the time, if you get caught in that trap, you're just dead. You're dead. If you have ghosts out and you have no starport and your opponent's going for a very early Colossus build, you're just dead. You can't hold that. You cannot hold a two base Colossus all in with Ghost Tech. You can't do it. So you got lucky in that game. So make sure that in the future, you, f you keep a good eye on what your opponent is going for and more specifically what tech they are going for so that you have the appropriate response ready by the time that it gets to you. I hope this video was helpful. Uh, I will be going to MLG this weekend, and I will be casting ISTL probably on Monday when I get back. So stay tuned for that. This is KT Vindicare. If you would like your own, uh, if you would like your own replay cast, or if you would like me to do one of these little brief segments for you, uh, let me know. Shoot me an email. I am KT Vindicare at hotmail.com. Follow me on Twitter. I am at KT Vindicare. And also, I do all these live on my stream. So if you would like to know when I go live, uh, check out my uh, check out my Twitch stream. It's uh, Twitch.tv/KT Vindicare. Uh, so at least for today, guys, that'll do.